Boom. Yo, I need a haircut. Follow me. All right, so I gotta get my hair cut in Chinatown. Now, shout out to these old school barbershops. They're really doing their thing, and I really recommend you guys check those out as starter barbershops, but I'm going to 12 Pell. So you guys might have heard of 12 Pell, maybe through you know social media or something like that, but they essentially specialize in fades, tapers, kind of the Kevin Wynn, you know, I guess haircuts, but also the K-pop style. Now, the style that I'm gonna be getting today is a little bit of a mixture, but Anyways, it's my favorite barbershop. It's where I go. We're gonna hopefully talk to the barbers, understand what it's like to be an Asian barber, and also, hopefully, we'll catch the owner of 12 Pell, and I'll talk to him, but let's go. All right, so I'm here with Marco. Uh, Marco, this is actually your first time cutting my hair. I've been cut by other barbers at 12 Pell, but uh, I guess, like, man, what do you see about my head? Uh, because I mean, does it? How much does it matter, like head shapes and stuff like this, when it comes to haircuts? It matters a good amount for Asian hair, just because I mean, if your face is too round, it looks very eggy. So we're pretty much trying to balance everything out, make everything look uh, more symmetrical. Okay. Uh, your head shape seems kind of long, so probably nothing like super tight. Otherwise, it'll look very skinny and very narrow. If you go anything too. But yeah, don't I want my head to look skinny or no? Uh, to a certain extent. Otherwise, I mean, yes, but if it's like too skinny, it's gonna look kind of uh, like pointy. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a, it's kind of better if it's more balanced. Uh, nothing too high either. Otherwise, same thing gets very long. Yeah. So yeah, nothing too short, nothing uh, too poofy, and you should be good. All right, cool. See, that's what I really like about this spot is because Twelve Pell is very technical, and they give you a lot of information. They'll even tell you about the products that they use afterwards. So I just think that nowadays. A lot of guys, they get haircuts, but they don't really understand what they're getting or why they're getting it. What's the first step to my haircut? I'm just gonna part the hair first, just to separate the top and the side, just so we know what we're cutting. Uh, it's important to section it, otherwise you might cut something too short or at least something too long, which kind of makes the whole overall shape look kind of awkward. So you can see how the hair grows differently. One part uh, goes forward and one part goes downwards. So if you're it's on what not sectioned correctly, the I whole haircut could look kind of like wacky. Start. Don't look wacky. Yeah. How would you describe a strong face? Uh, anything more square, more angles. Mm -hmm. It kind of brings out your jawline. Okay. Uh, it doesn't... Yeah, so you, you, you saying I got a jawline? I mean, you have one, but this can enhance it. It's like a makeup for like guys, I guess. Recommendation of where it should start? Uh, it depends what you want. Usually low is pretty good if you want more gradient. It spreads out the whole fade. Mid is kind of a good middle ground. And then high would make it very intense. Usually it's only good for like buzz cuts or something super short. Otherwise it looks very disconnected from the top. Okay, so if I tell you that I plan on growing this hair out for the next... Having this haircut for the next like 10 days, yeah. what's going to grow out the best? Probably mid. Mid would uh, help it last longer. Uh, low looks pretty nice, but it won't last long because it's less skin. Let's go mid. Uh, what, what's going on right now? Uh, so right now I'm just going to set the trimmer line. It's going to get this close to the skin, and then we're going to bald it out so it's a little bit cleaner. After cool. So you're using the kind of like T-liner, like the one that cuts super close? Yeah, usually for like lineups and stuff to make everything super sharp. Mm. But it just helps the hair get prepped for the shaver because the shaver is going to get rid of all the stubble, make it very smooth. Ooh, so you're, hit, you're hitting my head with, what, three different clippers in a way, or three different cutters. Yeah, pretty much they all do different things. Uh, the main clipper is to like blend and create shape for the bulk of the haircut. Trimmer is more for details and smaller de and smaller. Uh, parts of the haircut and then the shaver is means to bald everything out. Hey everybody, hopefully you find this video helpful so far because you know, I haven't done a lot of haircut videos recently, but we used to. I hope you guys remember some of those, but uh, yeah, let me know if you guys want more videos like this. Maybe I'll get cut by different barbers or I'll get different hairstyles or we'll highlight different guys getting different haircuts, but yeah. Anyways, we're at 12 Pell, which is, you know, essentially the most viral barber shop maybe in America. Here's the foil shape real quick. It's gonna get rid of all the stubble, make it uh, pretty much bare skin. This is the classic fade feeling, you know, the little bring, bring, bring on your head. I wanted to ask you, Marco, um, about your decision of being a barber. Was this something you always wanted to do when you were a kid or you had other career aspirations because you were in college? Yeah, I never wanted to do this. I only wanted to do this because of Pell and because there's like a media side to this too. Cutting hair was always like a side thing in college. It was fun. And uh, my friends would just ask for advice about styling because I knew how to style hair and how to ask for good haircuts. So 
they would either just wait to go home or pay to get messed up haircuts. Oh. So if I did it for free, at least if I messed up, they didn't have to pay for it. So <laughs> what did your parents say when you said, or did you ever tell them like, hey, I'm gonna be a come a barber, I'm gonna cut hair. Yeah, it's not the most like luxurious job to tell your parents you wanna do, but right. I just had to kind of explain like the whole vision of uh, it's not like a forever thing. It's more for like a gateway into oh. networking and meeting lots of people. All right, everybody here. I, I, I am lucky enough to be standing with the founder of 12 Pell, Carho himself. Uh, Carho, can you quickly give me the breakdown of the, the origins of 12 Pell? Why did you want to make a primarily Asian barbershop? I'm not saying that all the clients are Asian or that all the barbers have to be Asian, but it is. it did start in the Asian community. All right, pan to the non-Asian clients right now. <laughs> That's what I said, non-Asians get cut here. I get it. No, nah, no, nah, this is a very inclusive space, um, but we did start off because obviously we're in Chinatown, so it's very centric to our community, uh, serving very majority of locals. But it wasn't until 2020 where we hopped on TikTok, really got that explosive virality. How did you find all these Asian barbers? Dude, that question is best answered by the barber behind the chair. <laughs> how, how, did, how did we find you? So I got found through Julius, who works here too. We went to Sony Book together in college. So through friends and like, was yeah. there a scouting report? Like, are you scout, you're scouting people on IG? We, we did. We did kind of go through, there wasn't necessarily a scouting process. I think a lot of it we relied on organic friends of friends type of situation. So that's how I think uh, very naturally, obviously the demographic of our barbers became Asian right. because a lot of our friends and a lot of our community were Asian. We saw the opportunity in creating a barbershop for the younger generation. However, there wasn't a lot of younger generation talent at the time. Right. So we're talking about 2018 and back in the days, Fades took over everything, you know, it's fades over everything. You're not talking about too much sheer work. So when we wanted to level up the experience, not only in the industry of barbering, we wanted to cross that over with the salon game. Like low key, we're like the suicide squad because like everybody here, we're all so different. We all have like different personalities. Some of us are quirky. Some of us are like more chill. But at the end of the day, we all get together and we just do our shit. We're gonna detail some of the skin line just cause the hair on the back's a little bit thicker. So we're just kind of freehanding with the zero open and just kind of blending it uh, to look more even. So right now we're using uh, thinning shears to help blend the bulk into the fade. It's pretty much the same concept as fading with clippers, just a little bit more precise just for the dark spots. So we're just going to shape up the corner too, just to make this a little bit sharper, make it look like you got a haircut. Uh, some people have different styles. Some people like to push it back to make it look super crispy. What's I'd, your style? I'd rather do it more natural just so it goes back a little bit better. Okay. Push back a little bit, but yeah. not too much to where it looks like you've like a double lineup sometimes. Right, right. Yeah, I like a I like a shape to it, but I really don't need it pushed back. Yeah. Uh, getting water in the hair helps stretch the hair all the way out. Oh, so this is to get the maximum cut out of the hair versus obviously I don't wear my hair wet. Yeah. Uh, you know what type of finish you want? Like more natural and more shiny? Uh, usually go more matte. Uh, you know, back in the day I used to go shiny, lots of gel. But no, I go matte now. Cool. We'll use a matte paste today. Matte paste is going to be good for a uh, solid hold and it's going to make the hair more natural. So it looks okay. more uh, full, like nothing in the hair. And take a piece sized amount of products, warm up in the hands. And then when you apply it, you want to start the roots. The roots is what holds up your hair, mm -hmm. gives you volume and texture. If you get everything on top of it, it gets very heavy. Yeah. And so it kind of gets rid of all the flow and texture. When I do it myself, am I taking my fingers and doing this? Like what, what's the best way? Uh, yeah, the best way is to kind of start, you can start the middle if you want to. Make sure you spread throughout the roots. And then if you just kind of do this motion, it'll spread more evenly. The vented brush, comb the hair back. The idea is that when you blow dry this hair back, it's going to dry like this. So it's going to support all the hair falling over. So this part will stay more volumized for longer. Thanks, Marco. I appreciate it. Appreciate the information. And hopefully you guys found this video uh, helpful. I can just walk straight out of this shop because I already paid online. So there it is. Woo, man. So hopefully you guys found that video helpful. Uh, it's been so cool to see 12 Pell grow. You know, uh, we were here the first week that they opened about five and a half, six years ago. And then now they've turned into this amazing powerhouse. Car has been very helpful. You know, I even get social media tips from them, but ultimately I get a fresh cut. So you guys let me know if you guys wanna see more uh, videos like this. I kinda wanna bring haircut videos back, styling videos back, because I think it's really helpful. I'm not saying I'm the expert, but let me just tell you, I can talk to experts. So feeling confident, man. What should I do in Chinatown now? <laughs>